Hello dear friends, it's um, really been a little while since I've done another sewing video so I thought I'd just tackle another page in my sewing journal and I'll leave the links below to show you what I've done already. So I have a piece of um, what I call recycled card that I've used as a base for this page. I have just put a few little bits and bobs on it so on the outside I've got a piece of handmade Indian paper that I've had just simply for ages, a bit of washi tape. This is a piece of fabric that I've frayed with a little washi tape. This was some um, printed tickets um, and I have just um, rubbed a little bit of ink over them just to give them more patina because the, car the, yeah, the cardboard was quite white. Um, this page was a scrapbooking page that I had stuck down. I didn't like the fact that it was so stock, so I've used one of my stamps just with um, a vintage photo lace pattern just to break it up and did it on the other side of the lace, which I'm quite, um, of the zipper, sorry, which I'm quite happy about. And then the back's just got a piece of sewing patterns instruction and another bit of the Indian handmade paper. So I'm going to work on this inside spread right now and let's see how we go. Um, always trial and error to know what to do. I have this little pin cushion here and I thought I'd like to give it a bit of colour and elsewhere in my journal I've used a slightly sort of pinky tinge. So I have here this lovely, um, this was a sort of a, um, a berry tea bag that I have now taken the tea leaves out of. It's dried and I think what I'm going to do is just use a pencil to give me a rough guide and try and colour the pin cushion with this tea bag just to give it a little bit of interest so this is going to be very rough um, you can't see the pencil so well let me grab a pen it's funny some surfaces just really don't like pencil um, in fact I think I'll use a black one in case it shows through because there is a black line here already so how's your week been? We've had quite a lot of rain this last week which has been very very welcome because it was extremely hot before that and um, at this time of the year when we're growing so much stuff at work and the watering becomes a real burden it's really lovely. So I've done an outline here and I'm just going to snip it a little bit larger than I need just to be on the safe side and if this little bit of black shows through I can just go over it with a marker once the glue has dried on the top just to blend it in but I think it will be fine so let's see how I've done with that yeah, I think that will just make the pin cushion a little bit more interesting so what I'm going to do here is rather just take my glue stick and put it directly onto the cardstock just because this paper or this fabric that they use for the tea bag is not anything that I've seen before. It almost feels a little bit plasticky, which I'm surprised about since it's a food product, but it's not to say that it is, it's just the way it feels. So I think by putting the glue down first, I'm going to be able to control how I lay the tea bag a little bit more easily. So if you hold your card to the light, you can normally see a reflection where the glue is because it's still wet. And that really helps you when you're trying to be specific. I could have used a white glue, but I think it's going to stay wet for longer. And I want to just press on with doing this. So this might overlap a little bit, and it's not going to worry me. There we go. <laughs> That's rather fun, isn't it? Just to give it a bit of a look. And then once it's dry, I think I might just take very, very lightly just a little bit of my pen like that perhaps just go over some of these lines just to give it a bit more definition and I'm just using a normal ballpoint pen or as some of you know them they're called biros whatever your country's name for them is you know what I'm talking about right there we go so that's just a little bit of definition for that pin cushion um, I have from another scrapbooking page which had a whole lot of sort of cut out frames just these odd little shapes and I think I'd like to break up these edges. So I have chosen, I think, was this the way I wanted to? Yeah, I wanted to, yeah, this way. Um, 
I think I'm just going to stick these down on the side and not all the way down in the front so I'll have a little sort of almost like a tuck spot where I could just slide in an envelope so for this for terms of expediency I'm just going to use the double-sided tape which I've already put on and for those of you that know double-sided tape you'll know it's a wonderful medium to actually use the secret is that you must make sure that you actually stick your corners down really well otherwise the tape will lift up with the backing and then it makes life somewhat difficult to be able to continue like this one's not behaving so just sometimes turn it around it makes it a bit easier or if you have a bone fold or something you can just rub it down really really well and it's oh, there we go that's behaving now so I want this onto the brown card just to overlap as a border I think I'm going to take it right to the edge and join that bottom line up. I want a bit more of this lacy stamp to show through. There we go. So that gives me this little flap with a nice little edge here. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side because there are pages that are coming in the middle here. And they will have all sorts of other interesting things in them. So let's just do this one first. We've been planning now what we're going to start sowing for spring, can you believe it? And ordering seeds, so <laughs> it's a bit like people now getting ready for what do we need to order for Christmas. But um, it's a good thing to be ahead sometimes. So I'm just going to change the position of this so that I get my lining up correctly. And don't ever feel that you can't do that. It's always an option. Right, so I've got those edges now. I still feel it's somewhat bland. Um, these are some of the pages that will be going in the middle. Um, this is an envelope that's in the center that I have decorated. These are some bits that will be going inside that. Then I have this piece of hand dyed coffee paper where I laid down strips of spaghetti and I got those lovely marks. So this will be the inside coloring. But I just feel I want something on here just to judge it up a little bit. So I'm thinking perhaps I might just use one. Oh, there it is. This Dilution Spray, um, which is a shimmer spray. And I just might give it a few little, not too much, a few little spritzes. Just to, yeah, that's, I think I'm, I'm happy with that, just to soften the red a little bit. Brilliant. So, what I'm going to do now is just to try and get this to lay flat. And I'm going to leave this to dry, and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. Well, I think I've done it. I have now taken a little bit of colour and added that to my background page, which is this one. So this, you'll see the splatters have come up really nicely. I'm very happy about that. And then I also just used some of these lovely um, metallic pencil crowns just to colour in a bit of the tape measures, thimbles around the zippers. And I thought I would do this um, sewing machine in a lovely blue. Um, they're very gentle colours. And the reason why I just feel I want some colours just to break up the surface. Otherwise it just looks really, really flat. Um... I don't mind if it's not solidly colored but just to get something on the page just so that it doesn't look quite as stark it's all about adding layers isn't it you know so you build up a little bit and you build up a little bit and you add a bit more um, so I'm just getting a little bit of color on here very very quickly you can see I'm not worrying too much about um, whether it's all colored or not and I will go over this in the moment with circular motions because that hides any lines that might have appeared. Just to get that going. There we go. And then as you'll see here, I've just highlighted a little bit around the sort of shadow edges. So I think I'm just going to do that here. Just go along next to some of the, the lines that are already there. You know, just make use of what you've actually got already. Um, just to accentuate a little bit the detail there so there we go I've got a little bit of color on there they're very soft gentle colors quite happy with that because now that will form a nice background for me to work on 
So the next thing I'm going to work on is this little insert which is part of a second one and that is a little booklet. So this little booklet as I said earlier was just a piece of coffee dye paper where I laid strips of spaghetti on to get this effect and I'll link that video below. And then I have some little fold out pages that I've put inside this little booklet so that this is a nice journaling spot and I've tied that with a little bit of very very soft royal linen uh, linen fabric <laughs> don't know where my brain is today right so I'm going to set that aside because that will go on the inside here this here is an envelope which I have decorated and um, I've used a bit of washi tape and then I cut it right open I put some book pages on the inside because I didn't want to actually have just plain envelope um, print there because it is a sort of darkish grey and it doesn't really time with what I'm doing. And if you have watched some of the earlier videos to do with my sewing journal, it is a sort of, in a somewhat a way, a dedication to my gran who I absolutely adored. She loved sewing, she loved flowers, she loved roses, she was an amazing gardener, she just was an amazing person. But I also love sewing. So she and I both had a love for cats. So I have this stamped image which I've just done on a piece of old watercolour paper with a cat. But I don't want it to be a dominant thing. So I'm going to put it behind this um, window of the envelope. And you'll see that I've even splattered on there. So it gives it a slightly, um, yeah, a slightly sort of textured background. But it makes it feel as if the image is sort of way in the background. I have also taken on my... A piece of paper that I've done the book page just put a bit of watercolor there this was a metallic one just so that it isn't a completely flat background and you'll see that that will just give it a bit of color so the first thing I'm going to do is take off the double-sided tape um, and stick this to the inside of my window and the reason why I've used the double-sided tape here is because I need to get this just right in my window and the double-sided tape will pick up where I put it. So let me just remove this page for now. So if I'm laying this down fairly carefully, I need to catch the edges. I want it a bit more centered than that. So slightly down. There we go. That's great. So now I've got a little window here, which I'm really happy about. I'm going to glue down the side of this this way so I've got a pocket from the top that I could slide something in from behind and then I'm going to glue down just this edge so that I've got a tuck spot so let me do that quickly I'm going to just use a glue stick I have folded this envelope over and glued it here nicely already and you want to make sure that your edges are really really well sealed so that it does stick well I often find when it gets to the fold here sometimes we're a little short on glue so I've just gone over that a bit right so for this part now I'm just going to fold this over and gently press it flat like that which is brilliant right I'm going to need to give my little watercolor paper a bit of a bend so I'm going to put my fingernail there just to get the line folded over that's perfect right so now I have my little tuck spot here at the top and I have a little place where I can pop in a little journal not this size but at a later stage I will maybe make something bigger but I had thought I might like to also put that there because it's got a nice piece of lace so you've got plenty of options maybe a little bit of glue along this side here um, let me just run a bit here I don't want too much because I want enough space to slide my things in right there we go so I've got a little tuck spot there I've got my little journal with I can put some notes in, into the middle and now I want to decorate this outside cover here. So I think for this, um, I'm going to actually work with a little booklet that I've made. Sorry, I seem to have a lot on the table. So this, I've got a few little pages in here. These have just all been dyed with tea. And I have this hand decorated paper, which is just using dry brush strokes. I have done videos on these and I'll link those below. But I had rather a nice find the other day. I was in Ikea and um, I was trying to measure something and my son said, oh look, here's, here's some tape measures. These were all white. So I've just stained them with tea on both sides. I literally just took the tea bag out of the cup that I'd just used. And I think what I'm going to do is 
to wrap this around inside and out on the cover so it gives it a bit of interest on the outside and the inside and stick that down so let me just measure how much I'm going to need here if I do that to that edge fold it and then this will come across here just got to make sure that you're quite square when you do your fold so that you don't have an overlap that's ugly right so I'm going to do to 18 and a half inches that slip that off and I love the marks I've got because it just dripped and I didn't have anywhere to hang it because I'm in a flat I don't have washing lines as such so I just hung it over the tap and I got these really lovely drippy marks so very very pleased with that right so I'm going to start by just putting a bit of glue onto my tape here and I'm going to use the inches as the top facing area simply because in my grand's day when she was sewing and back in South Africa when I was a very young child we only used inches although we converted to centimeters during the course of my early childhood so um, she would not have used centimeters in her sewing so let me just line that up so if I get this positioned onto the edge here and I fold this over like that am I still in frame now I'm not it's funny one tends to pull one's work closer to you and then it doesn't work for the camera right so now I'm going to fold this over turn it over smooth it over with my hands try and keep this all going in the right direction even spaced there we go it's working out quite nicely right I'm going to do a nice little neat fold over here like that and then what I want to do is just line that up over the IKEA label there we go so I'm really happy with that I love the way this tape has turned out um, it's just given such lovely interesting marks so I'm going to give that a nice fold and then in the true art of junk journaling I have this pink tape and for those of you living in the UK, where does this come from? Well, it comes from your black sacks. <laughs> so it's the little thing that you would tie up your bin bags with. So I have it and it's just a perfect color. It's a lovely little width. And all I'm going to do is just tie this little booklet together. I do prefer, if I can, to get this little bow up at the top. And this is where my fingers aren't that dexterous. I always... I always felt I would love to make a, a doll's house to scale, but I realize I'm actually not really good at the very, very fine stuff. Um, so that doll's house thing might just never happen. Right, so I'm just going to trim the tails down quite short because I don't want too much to stick out. And I'm going to pull this bow a little bit so I make it a bit smaller. It's a bit chunky for my liking at the moment. That's a bit better. Give it a nice tug. And then I'm going to tap. Just to get that off. There we go. Now that I've got my little bow, um, I can actually slide that down into the middle and I think it's it's happier there. So let's see how we are doing here. I have a little tuck spot here. This is actually just an old, um, well it's not an old, it's a new paint swatch. And I made some handmade washi tape piece of... Um, yeah, it was a piece of embroidery that one of my great aunts had done and I just loved it but it was all falling to pieces so I thought well let me make it something with a journey so I've got a little tuck spot for the journey thing I've got my little book with all the journaling cards I've got another little tuck spot here and then on this front cover I have this I'd like to stick down but not completely because I'd like my little booklet to go in there so I think for this one I'm just going to glue down on two sides like that make sure I've got that and that so I like the Pritt glue because it's actually although it's really sticky and sometimes a bit annoying it does actually hold your work down nicely right so I'm going to position that in here just at the bottom there we go and then this will be my little booklet that will just slide in there so so far we are doing okay we've got a nice little group of journaling things here 
if we're going to put this together now with our page oh and I must say that the page I did do a bit of splattering on the other side because I felt it would just break up the spot so remember that this this is a section and it's going to slide into my bigger journal and I'll show you that in a minute so with this one I have a couple of things that I would like to add in I have this little frame that I made I measured it out by hand and then I just inked a bit on the edge and I think I'd like to put some needles in there um, so maybe I need to glue the edges down so I'm going to do that quickly let's get this going around the edges so I'm going to glue on the cut edge so that I don't make a big mess at the back otherwise you could tend to have glue marks where you don't want them and again because I want this to lay flat I'm just going to make sure that I've got enough glue everywhere just now before I started filming I was watching these little magpies outside there's a big tree just a little bit further away so I can't quite see the nest but the magpies I've watched them gathering all the stuff to build the nest um, I would assume that what I was watching just now was the little baby <laughs> learning to fly but it's so sweet because it just doesn't know what to do with its wings it's hopping around on the ground and expectant but it doesn't really know what to do right so on the back of these little needles I've got some double-sided tape and I'm going to just pop them into the frame here like that and then I think that these would be quite nice as a little addition into that tuck spot and then if I have a look over on this side um, I have one of these file folder cards and I have another little booklet so quite a lot of journaling space here so if we have a look at the big picture of the whole book and remember that my binding here is loose because I want to just see how much space I'm going to have to leave for it for later don't look at this because this is all a work in progress if you like me you've got little bits and pieces tucked in everywhere so that you know where you're going right so this is going to just slide into the middle of this part here and if I find the middle on this section and I find it's loose string for now you will see that we are making progress with this journal so it will be bound properly so that's the first pages with all their little tuck spots and some journaling cards um, another little notebook and a journal card these two pages I haven't worked on yet because I might still move the order of the sections around that's why I don't want to do these yet until I know what my final thing is and here's today's one so we've got nice little notebooks, we've got reference to the tape measures which tie up with that. We've got another little notebook, another little journaling card, and a little notebook, and a little file folder thing. So I hope you've enjoyed being with me, I hope you've got a few little ideas of things that you can do. And as you can see this is already starting to be rather a fat journal. So hence me not binding it yet because I don't want this to be too strained. I want to see what I need to um, do in terms of accommodating length on the spine. So thank you for joining with joining me and next time we'll tackle the next another section on this and it's already plans in the making. Bye for now.